first of all, uh, thank you very much because uh, there are different schools coming at different times, and we are trying our best to honor them and acknowledge their achievements. Coming next is the panel discussion on the topic of the persistence of the traditional ICH to connect with communities and challenges. We are very happy to have Professor Joseph Ting as a moderator today. Please allow me to welcome our panelists today. First of all, Professor Chen Ching, Selena, Associate Academic Vice President, University Research, Hong Kong Xu Yan University. And Mr. Chao Heng Wa, Curator, Hong Kong Museum of History. Please take your time. Mr. Lau Kuok Leung, Principal at Chinese YMCA College. And Ms. Li Yi Ying, Principal Kowloon True Light School. And also Ms. Yip Lai Hong, we have seen her in the video clips already. She is the principal of Kuntong Government Secondary School. Last but not least, Mr. Louis Yu, Director of Hong Kong Art School. Without further ado, I would like to pass the time to Professor Ting. Good afternoon, everyone. Just now, we have uh, presented several gifts, and now we are beginning our panel discussion. I have been sitting in the first ICH committee since we first established, and I've raised one question because we are very dissatisfied with the name IHT, ICH because intangible cultural heritage. As you can see today, it is something that is alive. We, we should not call it a heritage. But uh, that terminology has been said. It's not up to us to change it. We believe that it has to, uh, we have to name it as something to pass on. And today we really see how we are passing it on. At first, we find it very difficult because ICH comes from the civil society and they are highly historical. Some of it is a technique. For others, it is something being organized um, among the citizens as a corporate activity. So how can we preserve all these? I still remember at first we find it all we all find it very difficult. We're not sure how we can do that. But as we can see today, it is actually a huge success. The most important thing to do is to educate. Education is very important. For some of the ICH items are still uh, very easy to see in our daily lives, but some of them are uh, gradually dying out. If we are to uh, revive it, it is through nothing but education and through the students who are in our midst to uh, put effort into revigorating all this. For our panel discussion today, I would like to first invite Professor Selena Chen to share with us. Thank you very much. I have prepared a PowerPoint. I would like to take this opportunity to share how ICH connect with the community through an example, and I would like to shed light on the sustainable development of it. I would like to take on the uh, Hungry Ghost Festival of the Chu Chow community in Hong Kong. Why did I choose it as a, as a opportunity? Because uh, I have been researching on this since 2012, and I realized that they have uh, multiple challenges. If you have some uh, knowledge about it, uh, in the seventh month of the lunar calendar, in the public spaces, in the uh, basketball courts, you will see the bamboo scaffolding. Then you will know that it's the Hungry Ghost Festivals. There has been uh, mysteries and myths asking you not to go out at night in the seventh month of the lunar calendar. This is the basic understanding that we all have, but not many of us will step into uh, the activity space. Over 50 public spaces will hold activities of Hungry Ghost fest Festivals in Hong Kong, but they are actually um, some endangered festivals because uh, most of the participants are elderly, 
and not many young people are interested in it. And it takes a lot of uh, resources. It takes um, several hundreds, thousands to millions, and it is all from uh, fundraising from the general public. It also takes up a lot of space. Sometimes you uh, cannot have the basketball courts that you want because there are activities going on. And the most difficult thing is that we don't find this hungry ghost fatherful relevant to our lives. So how can we promote it? I think different stakeholders can play their part. For the uh, local organizations of the Hungry Ghost Festivals, for sure, they have a role to play. And actually, the, the Hungry Ghost Festivals are being held by many Chu Chow community and other relevant associations, including the cultural festivals and so on. Uh, education institutions can also play a part in um, 2015, under the support of a jockey club and also the Chu Chou Community Associations, I have done a research and published a book about the Hungry Ghost Festivals of the Chu Chou Association. And there are also publications in other periodicals as well. As far as I know, in this festival, the participation of secondary school is very limited. But I know that in all other activities, there are many high school students playing a part in it, including uh, the crafts, including the uh, uh, bun festivals. A lot of high schools in Chengchou has been participating a lot in it. What I really want to see is um, the secondary schools in different districts can uh, take part in it, try to check it out in the seventh month of the lunar calendar. Also, including the government departments, the tourism board, and also the ITB, they can also put an effort into it. And all the stakeholders can interact with each other. What we want, what we are trying to do is to strengthen the uh, community ties and its sustainable development. Two things are very crucial. First, we need a new imagination about the community. It's not just something geographical, but uh, it is a foundation based on relationship, network, and imaginations. So a lot of people are interested in certain things because of the relationship. When we are talking about the elements of community, of ICH, it is something that goes beyond geography. We also need to put more effort into working on the younger generation because they are the persons who help us to develop sustainably. If we want to arouse their interest, my personal understanding is that you have to go digital. You have to uh, go digital because they enjoy going online. They enjoy browsing Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. They also enjoy watching video clips and animations. Therefore, starting from last year uh, at the ICH office under their sponsorship, I have created some uh, more innovative activities. Together with some students, we have created a series of comics as well as animations. hoping that uh, these will arouse the interest of the students to understand more. We have also uh, produced some video clips about the Hungry Ghost Festival under the pandemic. If you are interested, uh, you may scan the QR code on the screen. And tomorrow, I am going to pull it on YouTube. I hope that the young people will be able to watch it anytime, anywhere. I hope that the promotion can uh, go beyond the geographical boundaries, even go beyond Hong Kong. Last year, due to the pandemic, many of these associations are being impacted. And I've written a passage on this at the uh, UNESCO ICH website. I have published an article talking about how the Hungry Ghost Festivals deal with the challenges under the pandemic, and I would like to share the message. I think as a next step, uh, we can do some comparative studies between Hong Kong and other parts of the world, and we can have more exchanges. Thank you. Thanks very much. Professor Chen. Have you organized um, the Yulan events this year? Well, this year, like last year, we are really affected by COVID. Um, the uh, the LCSD hasn't given approval to any um, playgrounds. We need to have a lot of uh, religious people, uh, mostly from the mainland. Um, the borders are closed, and so we don't have um, the the people coming out here. Fingers crossed that uh, we can resume uh, next year. 
Yes, we need to have um, the events uh, in new formats. Well, let's uh, now invite uh, Mr. Zhao Hinghua, curator, Hong Kong Museum of Art, a uh, Museum of History. Uh, Mr. Chow has been involved in ICICT for many years. Uh, he is involved in um, archaeology. He will be um, he will be digging up um, the um, the ground and earth and relics. And now he's dealing with um, ICH. Mr. Chow. From tangible cultural heritage and intangible cultural heritage. Um, I've also been involved. Uh, let me introduce this uh, from the public point of view. Why is it over the past decade or so um, we have to um, strive to protect the ICH items? And that leaves us scratching our heads. We are tying in with um, the new convention of the UN, um, which is around for about a decade or so, I mean, since 2003, we have the Convention for Safeguarding um, the ICH. The whole purpose of the convention is in response to the uh, Western society's uh, practices to protect um, the ICH over the past 100 or 20, 200 years um, in Europe and the U.S. have been trying to protect the um, the, um, the relics. They have um, a lot of um, legislative backup. Um, they hit the peak in the um, 1970s. Um, they have um, the, the convention. Uh, we, we are very interested in all these um, relics when we are traveling. But then we discover that there are a lot of um, heritage that warrants protection. It doesn't make sense um, just to protect the tangible things instead of um, the intangible things. Um, the whole knowledge base is very important. So uh, ICH gained traction since the 1970s and 1980s. It was um, it wasn't until 2003 that the convention came about. The convention is um, there uh, not to protect um, the the relics uh, like the um, the, uh, the 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 um, imperial palace or the the um, the Great War. Or rather, it is there to protect the the concept and the knowledge um, system. If you refer to the convention, there are references to community individuals. So what we have to do is um, to do community engagement. The convention was enacted in 2003, and it was put in force in 2006. And this convention has been very popular around the world. And there are 190 countries that are signatories of this. There are not 190 countries, 180 of them have become signatories in just a couple of years' time. Under the convention, it is stipulated that we should um, try our means to um, make sure that there is transmission of heritage, uh, like uh, Cantonese um, opera. It is um, an ICH item. We have to protect the whole system, uh, all the uh, Cantonese opera actors and actresses and the musicians, the props, and so on. And the tradition and custom of um, Kentish opera have also to be protected, uh, like um, the Yulan uh, Festival Opera. And we should allow them the opportunity to carry on with this tradition. 
we conducted a survey. There are more than 400 items uh, there. There are so many people um, that, are, that are transmitting the, the tradition. And we have so many uh, students who took part in this um, ICH Plus program. And they've acquired the knowledge. And then they um, develop um, the the uh, heritage. And we have to count on the next generation to get this done. Thank you very much, Mr. Chow. There are three more principles. Mr. Lao Kok Leung, principal of Chinese YMCA College. Thank you, Professor Ting. Our school has taken part in this ICH Plus uh, program. And there are many different items uh, like um, paper crafting and wooden furniture crafting uh, that we have joined. In these uh, programs, the students have to uh, produce their work. Um, By the time they finish, it's not the end of the story. They have to um, get um, the uh, the master to to uh, pass the, their work, and that's why we had the um, different ranking uh, for the um, accreditation. Uh, those who are good enough uh, will achieve outstanding performance. During COVID. Our students uh, were given the opportunity to get involved in the ICH production. And they have to showcase and their production as well. I think this is uh, a very good experience uh, for the students in terms of ICH. The students have to uh, feelings, and they find it uh, a really an awful idea, and they have uh, added their creativity to the um, heritage, and they've come up with uh, new products, and they um, are given a new vision of um, the ICH heritage, and they they've enjoyed a new experience. Basically, previously, they might feel that ICH is something outmoded, it is something that is um, old-fashioned. But after joining this program, um, where they have inv been involved in the production, they've um, injected uh, into it their own creative ideas. And they can merge the ICH with um, their own ideas in coming up with um, their own products. We've been involved um, in this program for three years. Basically, we are targeting at um, secondary two students. We couldn't get it off the ground for the first year uh, because uh, we had to cope with um, the external assessment and we were terribly busy. But by the third year, uh, we couldn't get this done because, uh, because of the sheer number of uh, participants. So within the three years, uh, we took part um, for seven terms out of nine, and the students benefited enormously. We, we were involved in uh, paper cutting, paper crafting, and wooden furniture crafting, and so on. In this um, ICH Plus program, uh, this makes me think of um, the, the Cantonese uh, feature films. I was uh, a kid. Um, the uh, Cantonese feature films um, were always on in my uh, younger days. And this is a collective memory in society. And the culture would have an impact um, on the uh, next generation. I think the, the film culture in Hong Kong uh, is building on the, the Cantonese feature films. And there are so many um, philosophy of life. Uh, in these uh, movies, so other than learning the, the craftsmanship, um, they also have to learn the culture, the moral values, and so on. Like in these uh, Cantonese movies, they talk a lot about uh, how to be good people, how to be good, uh, responsible 
a person, and there is also an element of um, Confucian, Confucian ideas, and it is also um, a, a documentation of um, the economic, social economic situation. So in my um, growing up, I understood um, the, the um, situation so much, uh, mainly through the Cantonese feature films. And there is also the, the values of traditional um, values, uh, like um, this uh, righteousness, um, the feel of piety, and mutual help, and so on. And in this ICH Plus uh, program, rather than learning the, the craft, and they also have to learn all these traditional Chinese values that, that are embedded in, in it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lau. Well, in an apprenticeship, uh, you have to respect uh, your master, of course. Let's hear from another uh, principal uh, from Kowloon Chu Light School, uh, Madam Li Ying. Thank you very much. I'm Professor Ding. Um, hello, everybody. I'm really delighted to, to be sharing here on stage. When our school received um, this program, we were really um, overjoyed uh, because uh, we figured that um, this ICH Plus is uh, uh, a good fit uh, for our school. And let me show you a clip uh, for um, a minute or so. You are the light of the world. This is the motto of True Light School. As you can see, our school uniform is exactly Cheng Shan. As Professor has shared, this is definitely not history. It's something that we wear every day. For us, of course, this is a culture that has been passed on uh, for many years because, like our school, we have been established for 150 years. Over the time, the fashion of Chen Sam has evolved, but still it is very traditional. So we are very excited to learn about this program, and I told my teachers that we really have to sign up for this. We have selected Chen Sam as our program. It is our school uniform, so it is really meaningful to us. It's all about our cultural inheritance as well as an uh, amplifications of feminism. We will wear it at work and at schools, and it is still highly functional. But at the same time, it will be able to show the uh, beauty, uh, the feminine beauty so that we can uh, both be tough and strong at our work and still feminine. So we are very thankful for uh, Lingnan University for accepting our application. So we are doing this in our home economics lessons. The whole form of a secondary three students will be participating into it. So it's not just a small group of students. We are creating a mini uh, qi pao. Uh, you can see the students are enjoying it a lot because they can learn how to uh, create it. Although it is a miniature, but it's still not easy because it takes a lot of uh, complicated techniques, which is drastically different from what they usually learn from the home economics lessons. We are very thankful to the teachers as well as the staff from the university. During the pandemic, they um, made use of the, the online module to help our students to continue learning. As we join in this program, I'm also very happy to have a public exhibition. These are the works of our students, which is being shown in public spaces. So it is not just a promotion within our school, but we are also promoting uh, the cultural inheritance in uh, the public areas. 
maybe the students have never imagined that even their parents have never imagined that they will be able to create such a uh, product, but they are very excited to see the fruits of their work. We are very thankful for this opportunity by Lingnan University and it inspired our, our teachers and students to take part in it together so that we can uh, extend the theme of Cheng San and to create even further. For example, we are uh, doing artwork on the porcelain plates. You can see some uh, similar uh, motor here. As you can see, these are the themes of Cheng San. This is a, a compressed plastic key chain. So we are collaborating with uh, the subject of visual arts. Although uh, the uh, main collaborator is uh, the class uh, of the secondary three in the home economics lessons, but overall, teachers from different subjects and all students will be able to take a part in it. So as we push it further and further, we will be able to pass on the spirit of both the tradition and the culture. And I have full confidence that even for the younger generation, the students, they are very interested in this. It's nothing old fashioned. I think my students will agree with me. So we very much look forward uh, that this great program can continue in the future so that more students and schools will be able to participate in it once again. Thank you. Uh, the organizers and uh, everyone who has helped our school and our students. Thank you, Principal Lee. Next, we would like to invite Ms. Yip Lai Hong. First of all, I would like to thank you, Hong Kong Art School and Lingnan University for such great program for our school to participate. The Jockey Club ICH Innovative Heritage Education Program has provided our students with an opportunity to uh, take part in it firsthand because they have uh, heard a lot about ICH. But as they participate in this program, well, at first they didn't know what to do. Therefore, this firsthand experience is something highly delightful. The reason why we participate is that our school has said one of our concern items as promoting traditional cultures. We also want to enhance the understanding of our students towards the uh, traditional culture and rituals so that they will have a better sense of belongings. And as we received information about this program, we immediately accept the offer. And I really wish that well, sometimes maybe the students can read a lot about the traditional craftsmanship and relevant knowledge in textbooks and on the internet, but they don't have any first-hand experience. So I really want them to get a personal touch of it because after they have touched it and experienced it, uh, their uh, understanding and feelings will be drastically different. By getting in touch with it, they can accumulate experience and they will learn to treasure and preserve this traditional craftsmanship and culture. Or else they will know that uh, if it dies out in the future, then our next generation will have a hard time understanding our tradition. Talking about our arrangements, we have invited uh, our secondary three students to take part in it. It is a multidiscipline uh, collaboration. We have uh, combined the history lessons, Chinese history lessons, as well as the technology and life lessons. Because uh, the secondary school students do not have that much time pressure in the curriculum, so they will have more space to take these lessons so that they will have a first-hand understanding about all these. Therefore, the curriculum of each class is different. There is one class who learn about the techniques of wooden furniture, and other class is learning about paper cutting. As you can see, under pandemic, we are having lessons on Zoom. We also have paper crafting techniques, as well as Changshan making techniques. In the lessons, our students are very serious. 
They are not just reading about these traditional items in the textbooks. With the teaching of the experts, they are getting more and more interested in it. In the past, they find it very old-fashioned and useless. Most importantly, the explanations and the passing on of values of the masters has great impact on them. As the masters are introducing these traditional techniques to them, they are also adding in some new elements so that the students would not find these traditional techniques boring and old-fashioned, and it changed the perspectives. There are a lot of things that the students do not know because uh, there are very high requirements in creating all these works, so they would uh, take all the time that they have to go online and do research. And when there is time to have face-to-face -face lessons, they will ask the teachers a lot of questions so that they can improve and do better. They have very high expectations of themselves as well. Therefore, the students are able to understand one thing. It is not that easy to uh, create art of the traditional techniques. They have to be highly skillful, and they can feel the passion of the masters as they introduce the traditional techniques to them. In turn, they would they would feel that it's something that worth preserving. We should not just give up on them. And because of them, because of that, we uh, believe that we have a role to play. We shall not just stop here. Apart from taking part in the program, in the future, we are going to build up a club at school. We call it as a um, passing on of craftsmanship club, so that we can pass on the concept of ICH through our visitings and arranging different activities as well as lessons, we can introduce ICH to our students so that these traditional craftsmanship can be treasured and preserved by our students. I hope that we can play a role such as that. Thank you, Principal Yip. Finally, uh, Mr. Louis Yu from Hong Kong Art School. Thank you. I have a PowerPoint. Well, about creation and ICH. In the Chinese, we have a saying so which uh, say that uh, sometimes people will just uh, create something recklessly or behave recklessly. But what we are doing here is how we can include the elements of creativity into ICH. When Lingyang University first approached us about this program, we have some very deep thoughts about how ICH can be passed on in uh, the contemporary era. Because we can find a lot of activities talking about preserving ICH or the traditions. However, apart from preservation, how can we actually pass it on in contemporary days? It's actually something difficult because a lot of times the traditional craftsmanship or techniques were born in a different times in the history. The religious background, the technological background, economic, social background, and interpersonal background are drastically different right now. So how can it be passed on? Apart from putting it in the Museum of History or uh, producing a video clips and uh, capsuling the past, how can we actually make it alive? So when Lingnan University approach Hong Kong Art School, I think that this um, program over the years is an experiment. We want to experiment whether or not we can make use of something that uh, is a dynamic, that uh, in uh, can we make use of a dynamic means of artistic activities to uh, revigorate ICH so that uh, we are trying to pass on ICH in the environment of contemporary art. As I listen to the sharings of the principals here on stage, I think that uh, they have already put the elements of contemporary art in the uh, ICH. By doing so, the schools and the students will be able to look at it from the angle of arts, and it is uh, infusing new energies in it.
as we create art, we are not just going to the campuses of secondary schools. One other important pillar is uh, teachers' training. Because we know that the masters of ICH are getting older and older, what we need to do is to cultivate in the future masters. So we try to spot some artists with training of contemporary arts. We invite them to come and learn and become a teacher in ICH. This is something special because in the past, or maybe in the past 100 years, contemporary art has been changing completely from modern art. Contemporary art is not just restricted to painting and sculpture is not restricted to, to wood and cement. The most important spirit is to ask and to seek the relationship between the materials and the techniques with the contemporary society. It is a thinking process. As you can see, maybe uh, the contemporary artist is learning uh, painting, but as they create, they might be creating uh, something on a piece of paper or maybe an installation art. So contemporary artists will try to make use of different methodologies to express themselves. In this program, we are uh, seeking a group of uh, teachers with contemporary arts background, and we train them to become masters of ICH. As you can see in the works of the students, Apart from the uh, instructions of the ICH masters, there will also be master uh, artists participating in the lessons, so that there will not just be the passing on of craftsmanship. The students are not just learning about the history of the craftsmanship and the culture background. They can also see that uh, the outcome can be appreciated from the angle of arts. As you can see, one of our works are being displayed as a piece of art. As you can see in this picture, it is a photo taken at the Art Basel last year. Some of our works are being displayed at the Contemporary Art Exhibition. You can see there are techniques from ICH as well as elements of contemporary arts. We are trying to respond to one question. Is it possible for traditional craftsmanship and us to relieve and reborn in the contemporary times? Up to today, I think that uh, we are having a very good response. And I also hope that we can provide a new path of the passing on of ICH. By doing so, some uh, craftsmanship or techniques from the old times can be passed on in the contemporary times. In the 21st century, such craftsmanship can still produce uh, something that is ha having a life of its own. Thank you very much, and Director Yu. It is um, a rare opportunity for ICH uh, to um, get passed on in schools. I'm really astounded um, to, to hear from Mr. Yu that uh, we can turn this into a contemporary art. If we can pass on the ICH, it's not simply a question of preservation. It will be um, happening on a higher plane of existence. It, it can be developed um, in, an, um, in an art form uh, in some ways. And this will continue into the future. And we have to count on every one of you here in this um, um, conference room. Any further points? I'm Rick. I am uh, one of the trainers. I am pleased that uh, we are um, part of the training program when we uh, turn up to different schools. We see that um, the schools and the teachers are very committed. 
and many times the, the teachers are far more committed than the students. But in turn, this will um, influence the students themselves, and this is um, the very important point. We show them how to uh, how to do the craft, but there, there is a bit of a distance between us and the the students. But if um, the teacher is in between, uh, let's say we're dealing with um, the the piping hot um, sugar, uh, the presence of the teachers uh, would would uh, certainly bridge the gap. I'm really grateful to the schools. Uh, for their facilitation. We we can run the program very smoothly within a very short time because of the facilitation on the part of the, the schools. Well this trainer is um pretty young uh, so we we can see um the, the craftsmanship uh, being handed down from um Generation to generation, or anybody else? Hi, I've got a question uh, for Professor Chen. Uh, you mentioned the passing on of ICH requires um, the cooperation of the schools, and in Hong Kong. We have a new arrivals uh, to Hong Kong, and th there is a very much a challenge. And many schools have to face um, the public examination, and in the uh, new curriculum, they simply cannot spare the time for for this ICH business. For the new arrivals, what has it got to do with them? These um, ICH items are just tips of the iceberg. Now, uh, for um, the Yulan um, operas, uh, how can these uh, be uh, perpetrated in a Catholic school? Well, I said that this is not the same as um, the, the craftsmanship. Um, now, for these uh, religious events, um, some people might not be interested because they are not um, of that religion. So uh, when it comes to um, the transmission, I think we have to transcend um, the uh, religious confines, like the Yulan Festival. I try to uh, make the connection between um, the Yulan Festival and the Hong Kong's economy. Hong Kong is an entry port. At one point, Hong Kong was a renowned um, entry port. Now, how does it? Uh, what is? Uh, what makes Hong Kong tick? We rely. Uh, on a lot of porters at the pier and at the Yulan Festival has a lot to do with um, the the um, porters uh, from the uh, terminals. They they were arrivals, new arrivals. Some of them passed away because of work injuries, and their fellow workers try to um, pay tribute to them. Now we can look at these stories in the context of uh, Hong Kong. We can look at these in the context of. Um, New arrivals. That this is the entry point. Uh, the other thing is um, the community spirit, the mutual help uh, spirit. In Guantong, for instance, uh, they can uh, raise funding to the tune of uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they they can um, achieve a sense of cohesiveness. Now these uh, religious events um, transcend um, the religious confines. And also um, the charitable um, distribution of rice in a community, they can uh, distribute 16 tons of of uh, rice. How come they have um, the financial resources? Now, the, it is the government's stipulation that one kg uh, is allowed. But in um, in old days, um, they um, distribute a lot of um, rice. These are Hong Kong stories, the underprivileged, the stories of the underprivileged, and also um, the um, the common folks. When you talk about um, the history of China, 
uh, this can also uh, be connected uh, with um, the history of um, China. I think we have to look at the social and cultural dimensions. There are so many districts in Hong Kong. Uh, this uh, Yulan Festival uh, exists in all these um, countries, and this is um, a festival that that conveys um, the the sad and stories. This can be hu uh, human problems. This can be um, natural catastrophe, and this is. Um, in every way connected with um, the district that people are living in. And this is a very good entry point. In the um, promotion drive, um, I hope that we can um, achieve some resonance. We, we should uh, strike a chord uh, with, with people emotionally. Professor Chen has got a very good point there. I um, take people touring uh, different places at uh, one time. We went to a Taiwan temple in Wan Chai. One of them, one of the, um, the tour members, refused to go in because um, they, uh, he he was um, a Christian. Um, do you know what I said? I said, forget it. We were uh, conducting a historical tour. This is how I feel if you are a Christian and you walk into a temple, and if you're converted into a Buddhism, then are you a Christian? Are you truly a Christian? If um, your religious faith is uh, so solid that um, there is no reason why you would set foot in a Tin Hao temple and be converted into that religion, and this is something developed in, in the community. If you look at the, the temples, it costs money to set up the temples. It is um, the collective contribution on the part of many people to, to set up these uh, temples. And this is a place of gathering. And this is um, a place uh, where, where people gather to discuss things in old days. ICH. Many a time uh, has to do with um, the collective activities. I think we can learn so much uh, from these activities. Well, I saw someone else who would like to take the floor. Thank you very much for the time. There are so many principals and students here in the audience. When I prepared um, the projects, while I was eager to find out is do you think the craft that you're learning will become your future career? And also for the principals here on stage, do you have any faith? I mean, it's only uh, when the teachers and the principals um, are convinced that there is some um, a path ahead that this is um, a possibility. If you listen to the two um, sharings and this morning, you get to know that in Japan, um, the craftsmanship is um, one of the careers that you can choose. So I'd like to hear from the principal about their ideas. If people learn different craft, um, the, the major contribution is that uh, we can have um, a more diversified society. We're getting fed up with um, uniformity. We like to have uniqueness. The ICH production is about um, the craft, um, craft production, which is unique, uh, which is um, personalized. So the production of um, craft can be part of um, a really touching story. I'm sure that this is going to be uh, one of the, the areas for uh, tourism um, industry. I'm sure a lot of students are really, are really keen on Japan. I'm keen on Japan. Maybe I'm keen on Japan for different reasons that that you have, 
I, I go there for um, for the um, relics, but you may go there for different things. But ICH uh, can be very creative. The, it is interesting uh, to learn the difference between uh, craft and art. Is there any difference between craft and art? Yes, Director. Well, one of the speakers said that it would be hard to squeeze in the ICH elements in the curriculum. But from the principles um, a moment ago, we can have this in the extracurricular activities, or we can have um, this element uh, built into the, um, the curriculum itself. In the secondary school curriculum, we have the art subject. We have the subject to do with design. I think that this ICH Plus program enables people to look at ICH from the historical context. It could also be seen from the artistic context. I think the most difficult part is not so much um, about the context we look at it in. Rather, it's a question of whether we have to train these. We have the trainers. The art subject teachers know very little about the ICH, or history teachers will have to uh, refresh their knowledge about the ICH. So in this um, ICH Plus program, uh, we have introduced uh, this element of train the trainer. I very much hope that the Education Bureau or the um, teacher training um, institutions uh, will start somewhere. At the moment, the, the masters are getting on in years. Um, they're in the 70s, in the 60s, uh, 20, 30 years ago. How on earth are we able to tell the stories? I think we need to have um, a new crop of uh, masters um, coming up um, and taking over. Are they um, the art teachers in or art students, undergraduates in university, or or the, um, the students are in the design faculty in university who will be uh, taking over from these masters. Should we have um, this element in the curriculum universities uh, so that we can have um, a new crop of teachers taking over? Right, principles? It was said that um, the secondary curriculum is uh, chock block full, and uh, one kind of squeeze that in. You have um, home economics, and you have history subject, and then you can you can squeeze that in in some way, can you? Honestly speaking. I personally think that although there are many requirements in the school curriculum, but on the other hand, there is flexibility. As long as you are revolving around the theme of the curriculum, you actually have a choice. But I very much agree with uh, another audience. Uh, he said that the most difficult thing for the school is to find the right person to teach. Even if you're trying to seek help externally, it might not be easy, or maybe they will charge very high, or the time will not be uh, feasible. Because if you are going to pull it into the curriculum, you're not just talking about one class of students, we're talking about the whole form, and each of them will have lessons at different times. Therefore, we really need to put together uh, some concerted efforts Maybe the school is not promoting it uh, year long. Maybe we are just sparing 10 lessons on it or a few weeks. I feel that our students are like sponges. Whatever the school is providing for them, they will just learn and embrace it. They will not be uh, building up walls and reject it so quickly. 
the key is whether or not the school can look for the correct personnel to teach them. Some people also ask, oh, would the student take this as a future career? Well, I think you never know. You can learn whatever you like when you are young, and you don't need to think too much. Just broaden your horizons and try whatever you can. In the future, maybe gradually and naturally, you will find your own path. Maybe it's something related to ICH or related to other streams of art and creativity. They are all possible. Maybe some of you will go to interior design or the movie industry. Or maybe you can incorporate some traditional elements into fashion design. I think the most important thing is to broaden your horizons and try to experience as much as you can. I very much agree that we should learn some crafts because when you're learning about crafts, it's not that much about thinking. We have been putting too much emphasis on thinking, but when you're into the craftsmanship, you need to be very detailed minded and patient. For example, when you are stitching those uh, uh, knots, it may not be that easy for the students. But as long as they have experienced it, it will be um, a new, a new experience for them. And I really hope that students will treasure all these opportunities to learn different things. Thank you, Principal Lee. We have a question here, which is quite similar to the issues that we have touched upon. He said that if the students want to uh, uh, wants to take one of these crafts as their future career, or if they want to preserve it, is there any path that they can take? Professor Chong, shall they join the museum? I don't know if the museum need that. In Hong Kong, as we talk about the preservation of ICH, and especially in uh, this program, the Innovative Heritage Education Program, our major focus is the, uh, the crafts item in ICH. Well, actually, the uh, Hong Kong government uh, seldom take the initiative to uh, protect these kinds of items because they believe that it is something that belongs to the market. So uh, the best thing to do is to uh, do it on the grassroots level. As we look at mainland China, you can find some interesting phenomenon because the government uh, has been putting a lot of effort into supporting this traditional craftsmanship because uh, China has a long history. But in recent days, a lot of these traditions are dying out. So how can we support and protect them? In mainland China, there are a lot of measures. Sometimes they will uh, give uh, the uh, crops, the crops master a grand title, like the state level craftsman's uh, master. If you are a master of the state level, then at least you can enjoy some uh, subsidies from the government. Uh, it's not a lot of money. It's about 20,000 of renminbi every year. It's not on a monthly basis. It's on a year basis. It's still good, right? Well, at least it's an acknowledgment from the state. As they become a uh, state level ICH master, then their product will uh, surge in prices. For example, this um, Lai Yingcheng, uh, uh, well, it is uh, not famous at all. Maybe uh, the product is only costing $10 each. But once he becomes a state level ICH master, a lot of people will want to collect his work. This is a huge change that is important. 
we are reopening the market so that this state-level ICH master can enjoy the privileges provided by the state. On the other hand, they have the responsibility to pass on the craftsmanship to the next generation. That means they really have to uh, recruit protégés so that they can learn the craftsmanship. This is the system of the mainland China government, but we can't find anything similar in Hong Kong. Where can you find a protégé? It is another issue. In the last couple of years, there is a, a very interesting term that is uh, uh, we protect through productions. That means we create uh, products out of this craftsmanship and try to expand the market for them so that these uh, state level ICH master can go into the campuses like what we have observed today. And what they do is to collaborate with the tertiary education. These masters will be invited to the colleges so that they can teach the university students about their craftsmanship and uh, pass on the uh, heritage. A lot of people will learn from them. And also they will uh, target some uh, uh, very poor provinces like Guizhou. And uh, they are also putting it together with uh, the uh, program of eliminating poverty because not many of them can uh, excel in studying. Some of them actually enjoy craftsmanship. Then these masters will be invited to these areas and teach the younger generations about those crafts. By doing so, they can actually um, turn around the economy of the whole province. It is a very successful example. So there is actually a way out for this craftsmanship. It really depends on the policy. It's not just something for fun because you can innovate. You can enhance the quality of the craftsmanship and to do publicity. This is the uh, whole package that we need to do. It's just one aspect. And I also want to talk about another aspect in ICH. For ICH, uh, craftsmanship is only one of it. According to the convention, there are five major areas. Maybe uh, a lot of craftsmanship are dying out. But Hong Kong, we have a very uh, unique position because we have a lot of traditional culture, which is uh, already disappearing in mainland China. But in Hong Kong, you can still find it. So you need to be visionary. It's actually around you. For example, like uh, the, the uh, ancestors worshipping and all the idol worshipping, they are all very important traditions. Hong Kong is a very unique place. You really need to learn and appreciate your own culture. At the end of the day, why do we need to preserve ICH? Because by preserving ICH, you are preserving the roots of your own culture. If you don't even understand your own culture, then how can you claim yourself to be a Hong Konger or a Chinese? Thank you, Mr. Chow. Thank you very much. And I believe that that's about time. So. Finally, I would like to thank you all of you for your participation. You have raised a lot of questions, and it is a very great discussion. I hope that uh, the students in the audience will. Okay, we still have some time left. I thought it's up to three twenty-five, right? Oh, we began late. Okay, we still have time, so let's continue. Some more questions from the audience. Thank you. I would like to respond to a question from the online audience. And of course, Mr. Chow has shared his insights, which is wonderful. It is uh, information from one perspective. And on the other hand, I would like to supplement on it. If uh, you have time, please go to the 10th floor. We have selected 10 uh, members of the ICH program, and their products are now available in our online shop. And uh, this is an example for you to see. 
uh, well, just now you have corrected me is uh, ICH craftsmanship, which is true. As you can see, the ICH craftsmanship is something that is fitting the taste of the young people. If you have ever strolled on a Thailand street, uh, there are uh, several stores which is opened by the students of Hong Kong Art School. In the third section today, we have mentioned about a concept of thinker maker. That means you have to create something that is uh, preferred by the young people nowadays. As they are seeking the meaning of life, they not necessarily live like us in the past. They might not think that they have to succeed anything. As long as they can find something that is meaningful in their life, or if there's something that is showing the taste of life, then they will go deeper and turn it into his or own career. In our traditional education system or in our elitism, this is something that is often forgotten. We will belittle a craftsman, but now it is a time like that. Under the outbreak of pandemic, people would think that uh, the most a precious thing is for me to spend some solo time on my own. Our society is changing. As we can see, there are so many young people joining the flea market and starting their own businesses. I think that the craftsmanship in ICH is uh, filling the gap so that we can provide them with an opportunity of future businesses. Thank you. We have another friend in the audience here on the other side. Well, uh, I have jotted down a lot of notes about Think and Maker. I am not sure if it is something particular in that section or in some other talks. Talking about cultural identity, I am an ar architecture student, and I am a product of the elitism. Therefore, I find myself uh, unable to do a lot of things. When I look at the construction workers, they are able to do the cement work, and they are able to do the wooden work. But what I can do is only just f furnishing. I, I don't really uh, feel a concrete in my life. And as a student, when I learn from the masters about uh, brown sugar, I have to start from raw materials, start from something that that is uh, that is really raw until we are able to create some shapes out of it. Just now, we have been uh, discussing whether or not we can make a living out of it. Well, I think this is something that we need to discuss in the future. If the creation of arts is based on the um, the need of meaning of humanity, because we, we just need to count the number of cows. There's no need for us to create art at all. But we're not just that. So whether or not this subject is uh, going to be included in the curriculum or only extracurricular activities, in both cases, I see students who are very committed. Some of them are really thinking whether or not they are able to use it as their SBA. And also, there are students who uh, have no um, art lessons, no HEA lessons after secondary school. So after school, they started to play this after school because this is not something that they can have in formal lessons. This is something that helps them to find joy and pleasure and to feel um, more uh, tangible in their lives. In this particular period of time, especially for me, is something important uh, because I don't need to spend all my time thinking of how can I get through the examinations. Maybe that's just another trap. But as we were talking about craftsmen, it's not about design. Design is of purpose driven. But for craftsmen, sometimes if I am in the middle of, of my craft, if I think that that piece of wood can uh, needs to be uh, preserved in the original shape, then Well, it, it will be something that cannot be verbalized. This is something that I'm still pondering on from this morning. And I think this is uh, something that's more important. So I don't think we have to uh, link this up with um, the career. In secondary days, 
if uh, you learn something about ICH and this is um, to enrich uh, your knowledge base, well, a uh, woodwork, um, I mean, this can be part of the ESC. If um, you're having a hard time uh, as a student, uh, you might as well learn a little bit about um, wood carving. This craft is um, an amalgamation of um, the heart and the labor. And I don't think you need to um, consider this to be your true calling. I think young people can acquire certain knowledge. I don't think we should be so um, materialistic. And these uh, knowledge uh, may emerge um, when you're getting on in years. When I was in secondary school, my mother forced me uh, to, to learn piano playing. And uh, the whole idea of learning piano was um, to, to play soccer after piano lessons. But the um, music is um, really cultivating you emotionally. So when you are dealing with um, ICH, I think the same uh, is happening to you. You may find this uh, novel, uh, novel idea now. Of course, uh, some of the students may be pursuing a career in this area, uh, like um, Director Yu Yu said. But I don't think you should uh, think of this um, as part of a career in future. This can be a kind of a cultivation. Let me supplement here. We said that for some ICH items, uh, society has changed, but they may come back sooner or later. That, like um, the uh, Changsham, this is coming back. Previously, Changsham was worn on official occasions. There are increasingly more women uh, who would uh, turn up in Changsham's. In my younger days, um, my students and my principals are always um, dressed in uh, Cheung Sam. My father-in-law is a Cheung Sam maker. He has retired for about 10 years, and he's uh, making quite a lot of money. The number of uh, masters who can make uh, Cheung Sam manually is uh, really dwindling. There are many who are seeking out um, these masters. In this um, mass production days, or digital production days, many of um, the craft people are getting very busy. I think about 15 years ago, uh, I was working in the Art Development Council. We received an application for funding, and one of the uh, handicraft um, person wanted some uh, funding. He's got very good credentials, but there is no uh, category for this um, handicraft um, business. So he was rejected at the time. Since um, the en entry into force of um, the Convention for um, Safeguarding ICH in 2003, um, there is an increasing demand for craft uh, personnel. If um, the craft uh, people um, are still around. They will be very much sought after, I'm sure, not just by schools, but also um, by by other organizations. In terms of Cheung Sams, um, the, the masters are getting younger and younger. And you can see that increasingly Cheung Sam has become uh, very much part of our daily life. The uh, traditional way of life uh, might be uh, making a comeback um, one of these days. Today, we are turning uh, craft into a contemporary art, and this is one of the pathways. Like Chang Sam, um, this is not um, making an appearance uh, in in museums. I'm not sure uh, how soon um, the, the Chang Sam for, for men uh, will be staging a comeback. 
So to answer the, the question, can we turn this into a career? I think things are um, making a change for the better. Like the principal said a moment ago, when the um, students are interested in something, they will be plunging headlong into, into it. I think we are opening up a pathway here in um, the ICH items. This is the best of time. All right, any anyone else are from the stage, from the panel? No, I think it is, it is about it. At long last, are we coming to the end of this session? Thank you all very much. Thank you very much for all the guests on stage. Would you all please be seated? Thank you very much.